notice the the angle. Same thing here, and it, and also this. So if you don't understand that Chopin has these, these all these um, unorthodox hand positions, this any of his music is very uncomfortable. So high wrist is maybe easy and triplets. So he, he did a lot of uh, fingering of the etudes, especially in the Macaulay edition, you can see. So there's this sliding second finger. Now here's, here is a really hard place in this piece and it's a beautiful example, maybe my favorite for a pivot finger. So, so this, so you see the second finger is pivoting, third, two, So when you're finished with this, you move, you anticipate the new direction. So your arm has to go in the direction you're going, not the direction you came from. right, left, right, left, because you have to sort directionality out. Another with a high wrist. So this is triplets. This is a kind of a pedal point. It's nice to have one part of the third more legato so you can connect. And you can see that I'm I'm over here. In general, for Chopin and Liszt or whatever, the weight falls on the outside of the hand and it's much easier to play this way than it is this way. I mean, playing in this position is very, very hard on modern piano. And the other thing is that if you're this way, so you don't need too much arm if you play this with a rotation. The same. Here's another pivot finger. And turning. The interesting thing, just to a second detour, is if you use Chopin's fingering and if you turn, the weight falls on the thumb, and that's the, you can really hear. So I'm not doing anything to make the two, I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, the two against three, but really it's written for that purpose. So here you have different three. teaching called, uh, I call it an energy impulse. So it's where you release. So it's usually where the pattern changes here. So when you have a, like a reset of a position, so 
housing. So you change the energy. So it gives it a little bit uh, like a better physical mapping. passage is very related to this age. And if you have uh, trouble with one place or the other, you, I mean, usually you have that kind of trouble because this, when this joint, the second finger joint is stiff, the finger is too stiff, and you can't, you can't get the plasticity and the flexibility. I mean, basically, when the when the key when the fingers are at the bottom of the key, the weight of the arm, you don't need any pressure holds the key down. Otherwise, it's you know you don't have to have any tension and you don't have to feel any strain. But that means that these joints have to be flexible. So, and you can see how my arm changes position. Three, two, one repeated notes go in this direction, and four, two, one uh, go like if I were doing go this way. But if I, you know, we're learning the piece now, it's very hard to relearn something after you know it. I would probably go. Because it's easy to repeat with one finger, like a. I don't know, so in there maybe. A, I don't know what key that's on. Maybe it's this one. So. to repeat with one finger as long as your hand is relaxed. In fact, it's much easier. So if you want to learn how to do repeated notes, here's one way. So I'm actually going four, three, two, one. But you're not seeing my fingers rise. Because the closer they stay, the more in touch I'm feeling this. So, that's what's going on here. And this uh, next passage is uh, the same. That's like. So it's this combination of rotation with different intervals. And putting the rhythm. So we 
have this this legato, which you really need a high upper arm. And classic crossing over, big interval. Seventh. Here we have our trip. <laughs> 